been roughly 240 days since Ohio State was crowned national champ. Well, now the offseason prep is over. And for Arkansas, its title chase begins. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. From Reynolds Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, it's the 2015 season opener for the 18th ranked Arkansas Razorbacks and the Miners of UTEP out of Conference USA. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Fayetteville. Alongside my partner, former Pitt quarterback John Kajemi, I'm Clay Matvick. And despite finishing last in the SEC West last year, Arkansas was one of the best teams in the country over the second half. There's a lot of excitement surrounding this team. They've got their starting quarterback back. They've got key players on both sides of the ball. And Brett Bielema also excited about the addition of new offensive coordinator Dan Enos. And I think, Clay, he's excited because they share the same philosophy. They want to create balance in this offense, and they know that that's the way to get to the next level as a team. They both believe in it, and that's the goal at Arkansas. They want to put more pressure on opposing defenses to cover and guard the entire field. What does that mean? It means more screens to the outside, more shot plays down the field, a little bit more play action pass, but they're also smart football coaches they know they have a huge offensive line and a huge advantage on the ground and that's where junior running back Alex Collins comes in the senior Jonathan Williams he's lost for the season with the foot injury but Alex Collins back to back a thousand yard rushing years coach Bielema said he's as good as he's ever seen him and that's scary for opposing defenses and like Arkansas UTEP hangs its hat on the run and they've got Aaron Jones well he's the face of the program the workhorse they want to get the ball to him at least 30 times today, maybe 20, 25 on the ground, and another six to seven through the air. If we're talking about this offense doing things in the second half, we're going to be mentioning Aaron Jones a lot today. Jay Maddox has it on the tee for UTEP. Arkansas won the toss. They elected to receive, so we'll see that Brandon Allen-led offense right away. The 2015 season is underway here in Fayetteville. And Arkansas will start at the 25 is Brandon Allen. Three catches last year, already two today. His role's definitely going to increase. It has to. For this offense to take the next level, Keon Hatcher and the relationship with quarterback Brandon Allen needs to grow. Just a simple speed cut to the outside and a good job fending off of Needham, the the corner on that coverage but good pitch and catch and we talked about Brandon Allen his accuracy has been off the charts this summer camp there goes Hatcher in motion on first down and 10 from the 44 opening series for the Hogs tons of room for Collins and he gets out across midfield as Arkansas is in plus territory for the first time it's a gain of seven Let's take a look at your keys to the game, John. Well, for Arkansas offensively, they need to create balance, and that's exactly what they've done with Keon Hatcher on the outside in those two big passes. And then defensively, you have to tackle in space. Deshaun Smith came up and made a nice open field tackle that time on Alex Collins. That has to happen. If they whiff in space, there could be some chuck yardage runs out of this Hogs offense. Second down and a long two. Allen away from center, hands off to Collins. And he gets behind those big linemen, pushing the pile. Arkansas gets it inside the 45 and a first down. Well, that is the M.O. of Arkansas. Four starters back on that offensive line, and for the second straight year, it's the biggest line in all of American football. Well, just as we've said, this is one of those lines that are going to win football games at some point in time, no matter what the opponent is. And you have to be able to depend on those guys on third and short. And they average around 6'6". Six, six. You know, it's, it's well over 300 pounds. Those guys, you love to be nice to if you're the quarterback. <laughs> Darn right. 
Play fake. Allen rolling out. Comes to the near side. There's Jeremy Sprinkle, the tight end. The coaching staff absolutely loves the junior from Whitehall, Art Newtshaw. He's going to be a great compliment to the other highly touted tight end, Hunter Henry. Play, we've talked about balance. We've seen some run. We've seen some perimeter passing. And now you move the pocket with play action passing. That all comes off of the big hogs up front, and it all comes from a quarterback that can do a little bit of everything. I think we're seeing Dan Enos' thumbprint already yes. on this offense. That's a gain of 18 for Arkansas. Just outside the 25-yard line of Utah. Now you may take a shot at the end zone. Make a quick strike to the flat. Stiff arm after the catch, and look at Drew Morgan go. Touchdown, Arkansas! Great play after the catch, and Morgan goes up the sideline for the first touchdown of the year. I think we've just witnessed the same type of philosophy from head coach to coordinator. It's what we talked about at the open. A little bit of run, a little bit of play action, some screens and bubbles on the outside. Get the football to your playmakers and let them make plays. Cole Hedlund, the redshirt freshman, First year as the starting place kicker comes on for the extra point. And Arkansas with a 7-0 lead. Brandon Allen 4-4 four for four on that series as Arkansas out to a great start in 2015. Play 75-yard drive on their opening series to take the lead here on opening day. There's Drew Morgan, the junior receiver. With the touchdown catch, 26 yards on the play. Brandon Allen and 20 touchdown passes last year already won this season he went four for four on that drive seven plays 75 yards over three minutes off the clock and we saw a little bit of everything and that's a good thing for Arkansas they want to get their playmakers involved they know Alex Collins is going to get it done out of the running back spot but on the outside a couple guys emerging Dan Enos the fourth offensive coordinator for Brandon Allen since he's been here and Allen will tell you he loves the chemistry that they've already created. Well, it's a collaboration. Anytime you have a new coordinator and you have an experienced quarterback, you want to get to the plays that he has confidence in. Wayne Salen kicks it off for Arkansas and heads to the end zone. Autre Golden, one of the best kick returners in the country. He has brought six back over his career, but wisely takes a knee here. So UTEP which went to a bowl game last year under Sean Kugler, who has turned things around quickly in El Paso. He's got his alma mater back to a bowl game in just his second year. We had to change the culture at UTEP. You know, drastic changes in his first year. The second year, kind of, the kids understood where he was coming from and the work ethic, and now more physical on both sides of the football. That's the type of style that he likes. He had a tough decision to make during camp who to name as the starting quarterback he settled on Mac Leftwich who won a hard-fought four-man tryout to replace Jameel Showers who started all 13 games last year Leftwich will go under center Aaron Jones will be the tailback and UTEP also wants to throw on first down but Leftwich being chased throws it away so two running teams by definition by Ten definition on first down you're right they want to run the football and they both come out with passing game but utep needs to play a clean game that means no turnovers limit the penalties don't flip to get the field flipped on you where you have to go 80 90 yards and defensively for arkansas they have to live up to expectations fred bielema and defensive coordinator rob smith they think that this group in 2015 might be better than last year's group that's saying something. Second down and 10 for the Miners. Darren LaFossa went in motion. It'll be Trayvon Hughes playing in his first college game. Welcome to this level, young man, as that defensive front gets into the backfield and the weak side linebacker, Brooks Ellis, who has moved from middle linebacker to weak side this year, makes the stop. Well, it all starts on both sides of the football up front. Defensive coordinator Rob Smith said we have eight guys and they're going to be rotating in and out And it's not to keep everybody fresh. They're that good 
So a loss of two yards there on second down. Now you have a third long. These are the situations, Clay, that the Miners offensively need to stay away from. Third down and 12. Leftwich steps up, throws to the outside. It's caught. Aaron Jones eludes a tackle, lowers his shoulder, and a great effort to get close to the first down. Aaron Jones, the El Paso native and captain of this team, has led UTEP in rushing the last two years. He is the heart and soul of this Miners bunch. What a terrific individual effort by Aaron Jones. And this is the way you play tailback, whether you're running it or you're catching it out of the backfield. You know it's third and long, and you're only a couple of yards away from that marker. Gets his shoulder square and plays big man football and moves the chains. The Miners 7-6 and six last year, a five-game improvement over 2013. The first winning season in nine years. Kavika Johnson running the Wildcat for UTEP. The true freshman out of Las Cruces, New Mexico, turned heads in camp, John, especially in this Wildcat package. And Patrick Higgins, the offensive coordinator, says this is new to our offense, but it's something we're going to tinker with today. Try to take a little bit of pressure off of Aaron Jones. You're going to insert Kavika Johnson at quarterback for Leftwich, and it's, it's a little wrinkle that just keeps the defense on their toes. And, and that's what you need to do when you feel like you're outmanned a little bit coming into a, a big environment like this. Leftwich making his first start since 2013 after a redshirt year. Hands off, Hughes again driven back in the backfield. That's a loss of three. With this defense for Arkansas getting great pressure. That's Demarcus Hodge who lost about 30 pounds this offseason. Demarcus Hodge does such a great job. He just beat Will Hernandez right off the snap count. He goes inside. Nobody there to put a hand on him, and another negative play for UTEP offensively that puts him in third in a long situation. And points per game allowed and yards per game allowed. This Arkansas defense a season ago was top ten in the country. So now on third and eight, Johnson is back in, and he'll keep it. And he'll get back to the 40-yard line no more. It's going to be fourth down. And Tevin Beanham, one of the guys expected to fill the void left by Trey Flowers. And defensive end makes the stop. Well, after a great individual effort by Aaron Jones on that third and long, Arkansas's defensive front in particular, Demarcus Hodge and the rest of those guys, they rally on third down and, and force the fourth down punting unit. Alan Luna. Rollout style punter out of El Paso ready to kick to Jared Cornelius who's back deep for Arkansas from the 22. Well covered by the Miners. 38 years, the first time they've been ranked in the Bielema era. They've been ranked since September 2012. And Bielema, as you know, likes to grow them big, recruits them big, fattens them up when he gets them. <laughs> and he takes pride in his offensive line. He even put these hogs on the media guide this year. I think, so. I think that's probably the greatest picture I've ever seen for a media guide because that personifies the mood of this team, the head coaching staff, the attitude you want to bring to the table in the SEC in 2015. And if I'm one of those big guys, I get that picture, and when I go to work, that's my business card. <laughs> I hand that to everybody that I that I know, and I say, you know what? You're not going to give me the job? <laughs> Let me just leave this with you. They average 6'6", 328 across that front. They'll start just outside of their own 20 on the second drive. Play action pass for Allen, who hasn't been incomplete yet. Now he is. Dominique Reed, maybe the fastest guy on the Arkansas roster. Couldn't catch up to that pass. The four-star Juco transfer. an offensive line again. You've got a 6'10 guy up front there, Dan yeah, Skipper. Now. I thought that was an error when I saw that at first, and then I walked down on the field and I said, no, he may be 6'11. Skipper moves from left tackle to right tackle this year. Second down and 10. They're going to toss it to the near side. Collins met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. 
Well played there by the UTEP defense. And UTEP has a lot of players back from last year's defense, which kept opponents to just 59 plays per game a season ago, fewest in the FBS. And the Miners feel like they're pretty good up front, too. They've improved as a defensive line. They've improved at linebacker. But if anywhere they feel a little bit exposed, it's in the secondary. And that's where you have a third and long here. See if Brandon Allen can take advantage of that secondary with the passing game. Arkansas didn't face a third down on their first drive, which resulted in a touchdown. Third and ten. Allen has time. Throws. It's caught. Complete at the 35. There is Hatcher for the first down. Terrific time in the pocket. He's looking down the middle of the field is Allen, and then he pulls the trigger. Talked about the accuracy, but the offensive coordinator, Dan Enos, had to go back and reteach how to run routes, and that was a downhill dig route that Keon Hatcher ran perfectly on third down. Collins again. Good run on first down of five yards. He had a good season last year. He's leaner and stronger this year, and Dan Enos is going to ride Alex Collins, and we're already seeing it here in this first quarter. Absolutely. Explosive, powerful running back, and that's what your offensive coordinator needs to do. Build around what you're good at and the talent that you have, and that guy is special. Come out for a breather is Cody Walker. A big bruising fullback tailback hybrid at 6 2 256 comes in. Allen complete. Hunter Henry, the tight end. Bouncing off bodies. Down to the 23 yard line. Henry has more career catches than any current SEC tight end. And he's a first down maker. And hopefully he'll be a touchdown maker for the Razorbacks on this drive. Just a good job of finding a small opening to the short side of the field. Another accurate throw by Brandon Allen. But Henry was wide open. Hard to miss him on that play. 55 of his 65 catches the last two years have been either a first down or a touchdown. Nothing has changed here so far today with that first down reception. 37 yards on the play. There's the big man, Cody Walker. Oh, he is a load to bring down. It's a short game, but UTEP Miners paying the price. Kalon Beverly is going to get credited with the tackle. It's only a maybe two or three yard gain on first down, a three yard gain. But Cody Walker is, that's generous, 256. Yeah. He's 260 plus, and he's 6'2", and he just throws people off of him at the point of attack. Dan Enix told you and I he expects him to be a thousand yard rusher this year. I don't see why not. This offensive line. And this is where you look for the tight end of the short side, high low. They like that in the plus territory. Second and eight. Allen again has time to throw, goes to the end zone, and just missed Hunter Henry. Just out of his reach. Otherwise, that's six. Yeah, that's the play you, you draw up if you're an offensive coordinator and Dan Enos. You get that two tight end set to the short side and you go high low. You get a corner route and a flat route and you let your quarterback pick who's open. And that would a better ball and that's an easy six points for Hunter Henry. So Allen has cooled off a little bit. One for his last three passing. And he missed two deep balls. Collins and Walker in the backfield on a third down and eight. Allen going deep toward the end zone again. There's Hatcher. Touchdown, Arkansas. Hatcher got a step on Kalon Beverly in the corner of the end zone, and Allen that time dropped it in there perfectly. Clay, that's the way you respond when you're an experienced quarterback that is known to be accurate down the football field. You miss your tight end on the previous play. Easy pitch and catch for touchdown. 
and now you get it on the right hash and you have to make a more difficult throw to the back pylon to the field. Another terrific route by Hatcher, but an even better throw by the senior quarterback. If you're a touchdown drive, there's 79-yard touchdown drive. Keon Hatcher, six touchdowns receiving last year. He is the number one receiver, you might say, coming into this season. They're looking for other people to step up in that position, but he is going to be the ringleader of that group. And I think he should be. He's the most, most out athletic and explosive on the outside. Trey Golden, he stopped short of the 20. Let's take a look at our Buick Drive recap. And well done through the air again for Arkansas. Yeah, good protection in the passing game. Keon Hatcher on the dig route. And you find Hunter Henry on the biggest play of the drive. Corner route wide open. And then you miss him in the end zone. But a savvy veteran quarterback comes right back and throws a dime to the back of the end zone for six points. You, you like the protection, you like the execution, and you like the accuracy in this pass offense through two drives. Number nine, that's a 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. It'll be a first down. Now oh, UTEP is gonna have good field position to start this drive at their own 35 after the face mask penalty on the kickoff return. But how about the Arkansas offense? 143 yards through the air already. It's 21 yards on the ground. That doesn't sound like a Brett Bielema team, but again, the addition of Dan Enos to the coaching staff might change things around here. We talked about having the same philosophy and believing in balance, and that's what you're going to have to do when they move through this SEC schedule. Five to which hands off to Aaron Jones. Finds a little running room up the middle. And gets it across the 40-yard line to the 41. That's a six-yard run for Aaron Jones. Jeremiah Ledbetter, Juco transfer, defensive end, makes the stop for Arkansas. Clay, we talk so much about the defensive front of Arkansas being the eight guys rotating in depth. But offensively for the Miners, they cannot allow negative runs and penetration in the run game if they want to get Aaron Jones going. Second down and four for the Miners. And here's Jones again. There was no running room that time. Josh Williams made a couple of starts last year at middle linebacker for Arkansas. Now that's his spot as Ellis goes to the weak side. But if you talk to the coaches, you get that sense, John, that the linebacking core might be a bit of a concern here early in the season because they've got new pegs and new holes. I think that is a big concern. They're so strong up front, though, when you're playing behind such a dominant defensive front, those linebackers might accelerate their education <laughs> in between the tackles. I like what they've got, though. Third down at five. Left which quick strike. It's going to be a first down reception for UTEP. Out across the 45-yard line. That's Jaquan White, slot receiver, first year out of Dallas. And UTEP will move the sticks. That's one heck of a catch to keep this drive alive. The ball was well behind White by Leftwich, and he just sticks that right hand out, and it was like Velcro. That was just a great concentration catch, and then be able to have the wherewithal to move the chains on third down. Coach is very realistic about today when you talk to him about it. What UTEP expects to see today. Their success is going to be gauged mostly on effort. On first down, Aaron Jones trying to find something on that right side. Couldn't cut it up before Josh Williams made the tackle. So Williams very active defensively on this series. Second down and 10. That was a strong run just to get back to the line of scrimmage a couple of plays ago. We talked a little bit about defensive penetration and how the Miners' offensive line, they can't allow that on a consistent basis. If I'm the Miners here, I might take a chance and take a shot here at midfield, get a chunk yardage play down the field. Well, they've got Kavika Johnson, the freshman, back in as the Wildcat. This is his niche in the UTEP offense. 
and he pitches it out to Jones. Looking for daylight along the sideline, gets across midfield, and is driven out at about the 46 by Jared Collins, the Arkansas corner. And it's going to bring up third down and short. The one thing that that set allows you to do, it allows you to spread out a defense. And they went with multiple wide receivers, so Arkansas defensively, they had a counter by giving them a little bit more room in the secondary, and it, it helps that offensive line operate. An Arkansas defense which lost four players to the NFL. Looking for a stop here on third down and two. Jones, a one-on-one -on -one battle, and he's got the first down. D.J. Dean was all alone out there looking to stop Jones before he could pick it up, but he got it. And UTEP keeps the drive alive. Nice play call by offensive coordinator Patrick Higgins. They're going to go unbalanced to the field, and that's going to allow one-on-one -on -one to the outside for UTEP and their best player, Aaron Jones. So you get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Very difficult to bring down Jones with that much space. UTEP now three for four on third down. They were second in the nation in time of possession last year. Controlling the ball well on this drive. Darren LaFossa, the fullback with the catch. And a first down run after the grab. Kalia Hackett makes the tackle as the first quarter comes to an end. UTEP driving. But the story of the quarter, Brandon Allen and two touchdown throws, John. He's been accurate. He's been consistent running this offense. He's found multiple weapons on the outside, and they hold a two-touchdown lead. Number 20, Wisconsin taking on number three, Alabama, tonight at 8 on ABC and streaming live at Watch ESPN. Paul Christ in Wisconsin now to lead the Badgers. Back to his alma mater. Should be fun to watch, and it should be an emotional game for him. And he's got a he's got a lot on his plate, so not too emotional. He's got that Bama defense and offense to worry about. UTEP moving the football. Aaron Jones, their star running back, takes the handoff on first down. And gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Here's Jeremiah Ledbetter again on a tackle. 208 rushing yards last year, fourth in Conference USA for the Miners, but only 143 passing. That was last in Conference USA. They're looking for more balance. They want to ride Jones as much as they can, but they also want to see the passing game be effective when they need it. Well, especially here, when you have an opportunity to get points and you put a pretty good drive together, now they go back to Wildcat, see if they can spread out that Arkansas defense. True freshman Kavika Johnson playing a big role in this first half already. He gets into the 21-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and about four for Utah. It's probably their best set to attack Arkansas because it seems like the Razorbacks go out of attack mode because it just that fake in motion gives them a split-second hesitation on that defensive line. Johnson's going to stay in there. UTEP three of four so far on third down. Jones will stutter step. And he just didn't have any daylight. That was a play that was slow to develop, and Josh Williams, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. Yeah, Josh Williams from the middle linebacking spot along with Jamichael Wiston, but the exchange, the timing was way off on that third down. And that's the first time we've seen that. You know, that you experiment with Wildcat, that's probably the one thing that will get you and get you a negative play is when you have that quarterback and running back exchange. Jay Maddox on to attempt a 38-yarder, the lefty third-year kicker. To put UTEP on the board, he splits the uprights. So UTEP with a field goal to make it 14-3.
so you can stream every game live at home or on the go. Just download the Watch ESPN app or visit watchespn.com. Close to 70,000 here in attendance in Fayetteville today for this opener for the Arkansas Razorbacks, ranked number 18 in the country. A lot of expectations this offseason. So far, they're living up to them. Two possessions, two touchdown drives. UTEP getting on the board with a field goal on their last possession to make it 14-3 here early in the second quarter. Well, it's time for the Razorbacks, and the, and the head coach knows that, Brett Bielema. It's time to embrace the expectations because a lot on their plate for 2015, and they want to see that, that winning percentage go up. Eric Hawkins, a little hesitation, then brings it out of the end zone. Pretty good return after it's all said, done close to the 30-yard line for Hawkins. And Jay Maddox, the kicker, forced to make the stop. This was pregame, the SEC honoring Mike Slive as the SEC is holding prostate cancer awareness games throughout the league in September to honor the former commissioner who is a prostate cancer survivor. And Everybody remembers that he served the SEC for 13 years and served it well. And the Razorbacks are wearing a helmet decal to bring attention to those battling prostate cancer and to, of course, honor Mr. Slide. Great man. Well deserved, and what a great job he has done for the SEC conference. Collins penned up in the backfield and dropped for a loss of five as a host of tacklers get in there. Led by Roy Robertson Harris. Here are the helmet stickers. And Mike Slide looks really good considering everything he he's gone through in the last calendar year. He does, and a great moment to honor what he's done and what he's gone through by the Razorback family and their athletic department and Jeff Long, their athletic director. That's the first UTEP tackle for loss as this Razorbacks offense has pretty much done what it's wanted to do. On second and 15, Allen throws wide open. There's Jared Cornelius. And that's going to be a first down for Cornelius coming off a solid true freshman season. They expect his receiving role to increase this year as well. The weakness of the UTEP defense is in the back end. It's in the secondary. And if you have an offensive line that can protect, and you've got guys on the perimeter like Hatcher and on that play, Jared Cornelius, that creates such separation. It's easy for Brandon Allen to sit back there and be able to throw the football accurately down the field. Allen now 8 for 10, 160 yards through the air. From the 41, it's Cornelius again, a quick hitter. And he, he gets go. loose. Touchdown, Cornelius! A 59-yard play. All Cornelius after he slipped a tackle. Terrific play calling by offensive coordinator Dan Enos. That's the wrinkle that this team has been missing. Get the ball quickly to your athletes in space. Either via a bubble screen, a hitch pass, a screen pass to the outside. Let those athletes get the ball in space. Cole Hedlund, who won the starting kicking job after a great camp, has banged home three extra points now. It's 21 to 3. Brandon Allen having a day. He's got three touchdown passes. 59 yards later, it's 21 3, and the Hogs are rolling. This first touchdown catch of the year, the sophomore taking it in for a 59-yard scoring play. All three of Arkansas's drives have gone over 70 yards. Explosive plays. That's something normally we talk about in the running game. But in 2015, you add in offensive coordinator Dan Enos. They want to open up this offense and get those skilled player players on the outside to contribute. Sailing puts it through the end zone, and UTEP will start at the 25 the fifth career three touchdown game for brandon allen one shy of a career high and he's been in control the entire afternoon he's mixed in the tight ends he's found hatcher and cornelius on the outside and big plays and guys have made the miners defense miss tackles there cornelius goes in 
on another explosive play. 9 of 11 is the senior quarterback, 218 yards, and as you mentioned, Clay, the three touchdowns. Four Arkansas players, or plays, I should say, More than 20 yards today, three for touchdowns. So Allen in mid-season form here. You know, and the one the thing season that, opener. that Brett Bielema mentioned to us was about the experience he had at the Peyton Manning at the Manning passing camp and how that helped him give him a little confidence. Good run for Aaron Jones on first down for the Miners. Gets it across the 35-yard line. And it'll be a first down for UTEP. Just getting back to Brandon Allen a little bit. He, this is a guy that he needs to elevate his game. If, if Arkansas is going to take the next step in the SEC, especially in the SEC West, they're going to have to rely on him and his accuracy through the air. And games are going to be tight. We've seen those tight games go the other way last year. He may be the difference maker for this football team. First and ten, Leftwich over the middle. Juggled and caught by Aaron Jones. And he's down inside the 30-yard line. Jones, who is a very effective receiver as well, hauls in a big play for UTEP, deep into Arkansas territory, a gain of 36. This pass by Mac Left, which might be the best pass I've seen all day. Now, I've seen some dimes on the other side by Allen, but that touch pass down the middle, that's a perfectly thrown ball in the concentration for a running back who's not accustomed to catching it down the middle of the football field. That's just a great job by Leftwich and a better catch by Jones. Eight runs, two receptions for Jones today. They'd like to get him 30 to 35 total touches, as you mentioned earlier, John. Here's Jaquan White on that touch. The slot receiver, first-year starter out of Dallas, had just four catches last year. I say that's a that's a tough throw because anytime you have a running back, it's tough to gauge how they're going to run the route. It's tough to gauge where they're going to be, and especially touching it down the middle. Well, you have to give a lot of credit to Mac Leftwich. A Wildcat quarterback, Kavika Johnson. On again. This play is whistled dead. Johnson hasn't attempted a pass yet. He's had three carries up to now. Timeout called by Arkansas. We'll take one as well. There's only laws in a rematch with the Hokies. College football primetime. Number one Ohio State taking on Virginia Tech Monday night at 8 on ESPN. Ohio State, just about everybody's pick to repeat. Ohio State has a 32% chance to enter the bowl season undefeated, undefeated according to the FBI. That's the best percentage in major college football. Buckeyes win it all last year, but they better have a short memory when they see those two initials, the V and the T. That's right. Because the D.C., Bud Foster got after him a little bit. With a little zone blitz, uh, a little pressure in the pocket. Let's see if uh, whatever quarterback, either it's Baird or Jones, can handle the pressure this time. Utah down 21-3, to three, but they're driving. Second down and six. Throw is caught to the 10-yard line. That's a first down for Hayden Plinky. This is his third team since 2011. Also had stops at Boise State and Portland State. The big tight end with a first down catch and UTEP's knocking on the door. Athletic catch. He goes up and climbs the ladder, does Hayden Plinky. As you mentioned, it gets the Miners first and goal at the 10-yard line. That's a heck of a catch to go up knowing you're going to take a shot. Well, he passes the eye test. He sure does. 6'4", 255. Consecutive good throws by Leftwich as well. First down and goal to go for the Miners. Leftwich away from center, a reverse. And this is Atre Golden. Touchdown, UTEP. The speed of the senior as he shifts into gear and gets in from 10 yards out. Let's get a little credit to Patrick Higgins, the offensive coordinator. That's just taking advantage of defensive speed and over-pursuing. Everybody in a red jersey, maybe 10 players were on the left side of the left hash. They're going to make a play, 
and Golden using his speed to the wide side was escorted into the end zone by two minor offensive players. That was awesome. Jay Maddox with the extra point. And it's 21 to 10. And a little bit of a wrinkle out of the playbook by offensive coordinator Patrick Higgins. Golden finds the end zone and we've got a game. Drive with a touchdown on a reverse to make it interesting here in Fayetteville. It's now 21 to 10. And that was a quick scoring drive. It's 221 off the clock. It took him six minutes and 20 seconds to get a field goal, just 221 to get a touchdown. So things start to click offensively now for Utah. A lot of efficiency on that drive by Mac Lefwich, the quarterback. And Arkansas will bring it out as Hawkins stutter steps at the goal line and gets it out to the 25 anyway as we go to the studio for an update with Brendan. Coordinator Patrick Higgins does the formation is to the short side that's going to get most of the players in a red jersey looking that way for toss but when you run the reverse if you can stop it right there everybody's there and you got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside so it's an easy escort for the miners to get that six points Collins with a stiff arm at the 30 he's got the first down and more to the 49 of UTEP, Fisher, and Matanezum finally bring him down, but a big run of 26 yards for Collins. That's the way you answer. That's a great job of winning it, the battle at the line of scrimmage, and you get it to the most explosive player in the backfield that you have. We talked about the injury at the open. Williams won't be available, so the focus and the spotlight goes to Alex Collins. Darren McFadden, the last Razor back to rush for 1,000 yards three straight years. Also did it in 05, 2005 through 2007. Maybe Collins the next. Deep handoff to Collins straight ahead. Inside the 45 to the 44 yard line, a gain of five. Jonathan Williams on the sideline today and he will be all season long for Arkansas. He's got a foot injury out for the year. That's disappointing. But again, Brett Bielema said if there's a team in the country <laughs> That's right. that can withstand that kind of a blow, it's us. It is. It's disappointing because as a football fan, you liked watching Jonathan Williams run the football. And you liked watching the tandem because there's a big contrast in styles. But they both were so productive. And it's going to be a huge loss. But there's a lot of backs as we see now Cody Walker enter the game for Alex Collins. Cody Walker. Boy, he's like a steer. Trying to wrestle a steer down to the ground. Just short of the first down marker. There you see Williams again. One thing for sure that Arkansas is going to miss this year, John, is his leadership. He's a captain, a four-year leader. That's going to be something that's sorely missed. It is. It's one of those guys that you want to have around and when you look at him you remember all the great things he did in this uniform so guys are going to have to feed on that and he can be influential to the season with a couple of those young backs you got a freshman in Williams that we haven't seen a whole lot of Walker again Utep was ready for him that time I don't think it mattered much Another first down, I believe. Nope. Fell short. So UTEP's defensive front blowing its neck, forcing a fourth and one. Well, I don't think there was any hesitation in head coach Brett Bielema. You take a look at that offensive line. They're on the, on the cover of the media guide for a reason. They're going to ride those guys here on fourth and short. Cody Walker dotting the eye. He'll get it. And it's hard to bring down. 6'2", 256, and especially with that offensive line creating separation. And it's a first down for the Hogs. Walker granted a sixth year by the NCAA after season-ending leg injuries in both 2011 and 2012. So they reclassified him a junior. Great news for Hawks fans. 
they've got him this season and potentially next season. It is. It's great news. And, and when you have a battering ram like that, now you get a first and ten. You cross the opponent's, the minor's 40-yard line. I'd take a shot going one-on-one -on -one against the weakness, and that's the secondary. They are going to throw. Allen going deep. Keon Hatcher out there. Touchdown! His second touchdown catch, and he beats Kalon Beverly for the second time. You've got a former quarterback at Michigan State is now the offensive coordinator at Arkansas. He's got a pretty good understanding of momentum. It, if I'm just the broadcaster or the layman and you feel it, the offensive coordinator, they're going to take advantage of those playmakers again. You get momentum back on your side with those chunk yardage plays, and that relationship, Allen to Hatcher, has been perfect today. That's a senior against a true freshman yes. in the secondary. And Hatcher's going to win that battle all day long. Keon Hatcher, six touchdowns a season ago, already has two today. And Brandon Allen tying a career high with his fourth touchdown strike in this game. College football Sunday. From Heisman hopefuls to championship contenders, College Football Sunday is the only show that ranks them all exclusively on the U and watch ESPN. And speaking of Heisman hopefuls, some say Auburn's quarterback, Jeremy Johnson, may emerge at the end of it all. Baylor quarterback Seth Russell. What did he throw six touchdowns six last night? Six touchdowns last night against SMU. I, I tell you what, anybody that throws six in a game, you got to be right up there at the top of the list. It's, it's way too early, but it's one of those things that you really want to keep track of because it could change weekly by the play of a running back or a quarterback. Too early. When has that stopped us before? I know. <laughs> I know. Four touchdown drives of over 70 yards today for Arkansas. This is the most recent. Well, I think Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator, really flipped the switch on the Miners. It's the same set that the Miners were able to score on. You get a lot of bodies to the short side, and you go one-on-one -on -one to the wide side with a go route and that's just good discipline and good play calling by formation by Dan Enos you go to a playmaker on the outside Keon Hatcher is going to run right by the freshman Beverly and he's having an enormous afternoon for the Razorbacks Look at that. very efficient drives Brandon Allen now 10 of 12 for 256 through the air and he matches a career high with four touchdown passes as Kavika Johnson, the Wildcat quarterback for UTEP, takes the snap, and it'll be no game. Dietrich Wise, Jr., the defensive end, making the stop. Rob Smith, the second-year defensive coordinator for Arkansas. It's amazing how fast he pulled that defense together in year one. Early going in the year, there were some rough patches, but they got it fixed, and over the final six games, they allowed 10 points per game. Best in the nation over that stretch. Left which back in there. He hands off to Jones. Not a lot of running room. Maybe a couple of yards for the senior out of Belfast. It'll bring up third down. I really like what they're doing defensively. You know, you talk about Rob Smith. He's a Western PA guy. I mean, this is a guy that... It's As steel mills, it's, it's <laughs> iron workers, it's that type of mentality. And, you know, the first thing he does is come in and he shows you that. He shows you that exuberance. And I think that feeds well to his players. And I think that his message is conveyed very easily. They held Texas to just 59 yards in that bowl game last year. That defense was terrific the last month and a half. Third down and eight. Drop pass to Aaron Jones. He's going to be close to the first down. His effort is never it's unbelievable. unbelievable. He's willed himself two first downs by himself. I mean, this is just an individual effort on a small screen pass or a slip screen, and he's able to, to dodge red jerseys and get enough yardage for a first down. Over 1,300 yards last year, 14 total touchdowns. High character kid, Sean Kugler can't say enough about him. Very involved in his hometown, helps the community. There he is again on first down. 
This time, Arkansas ready for him. As the Hawks stand him up and drive him down. Talked about the four players lost to the NFL on the defensive side of the ball for Arkansas. Tevin Mitchell, Trey Flowers, Darius Phylon, and Martel Spate. Especially in this part of the country, they became household names. They are. They were terrific at the end of last year, and they're and, gone. And now you've got guys like Brooke, Brooks Ellis moving positions. Winston trying to play a bigger role. You've got a, enough athletes, and especially with that rotation of the front defensive line, you've got eight guys. Another reverse, and again it's Atre Gold, and this time he's bottled up. But there is a penalty marker in the backfield. Arkansas was not going to bite on that twice. And there's Brooks Ellis on the stop, but there is a marker on the play. May have been a hold on that reverse to the short side of the field. There's Matt Leffler. Holding. Offense, number 14, that penalty is declined. The result of the play, third down. Anytime you have a slow developing play, here's your quarterback here. He's going to have the toss, and then it looked like he was involved in trying to be the escort. And anytime you run up against your Michael Winston, I'd hold him as well. Yeah, that's a tough block to ask your quarterback, and I know he's kind of the bigger, stronger wildcat guy but that's a tough block to make on the perimeter and now you put yourself in a third and very long situation coming up on two minutes to play here in the half now this Arkansas defense is rolling now Dietrich Wise and Jeremiah Ledbetter meet at the point of attack and Jones goes down Fifth tackle for loss for this Hawks defense. Negative plays. That's the one thing that the Miners, especially offensively, they had to stay away from. And it seems like every time they're in a third down, third and long, the Razorbacks have bowed their backs a little bit higher and done a nice job of getting off the field. Arkansas with a chance to get the football back here with time on the clock. Cornelius standing back at the 27-yard line of Arkansas. Second punt for Luna. We're going to get a timeout. Timeout UTEP with 1.15 to go here before halftime. Arkansas's defense really standing tall on that last minor series. Half in Fayetteville, we all already have a top 25 team that has gone down. We'll talk about Stanford's loss in Auburn against Louisville. We'll check in on that one as well. Clay, back to you. We'll see you in a minute and 15 seconds. Now yeah, the Cardinal going down today. Some picked them for a dark horse contender to be in that college football playoff. You never know. I mean, in the beginning of the season, what kind of team do you have? And you have to play a game, obviously, to find out. And for a while here, you know, you felt like the Miners were getting a little bit more momentum back. Let's see if Arkansas can get possession and punch, it, punch one in. Luna skips it over the head of Jared Cornelius. He has to go back to the 10-yard line. Here's his return. He's elusive. A lot of effort to get back to the 19-yard line, and that's where Arkansas will have it with under a minute to go here before half. Two timeouts. You've got a long way to go. There's a Looks like there's a penalty marker on the field as well, so... You don't want to get greedy in this situation if you're offensive coordinator. Dan Enos, but you don't you don't want to fold your tent either because you've got a, a 28 to 10 lead and you feel like you can be you can impose your over, dominance anytime. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, seven on the return team. It's half the distance to the goal. First down, Arkansas. Damon Mitchell, who's going to have a big role on special teams this year, the former quarterback who's going to play wide receiver. We call him Duwop. That penalty puts it back inside the 10-yard line. I think that changes the complexion and makes it easier for Dan Enos. You come out and you go with a running play and you see what, what happens. You know, you see how, how many yards you can get because there's only two timeouts on the other side as well. Dan Enos, former Michigan State assistant, spent the last five years as Central Michigan's head coach but fell in love with Arkansas. 
a lot of time on the clock here for the Hogs before halftime. They're going to give it to Collins, and he'll be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. When are we going to see this rushing attack for Arkansas uh, get some real work in the second half, I think, I would so. think huh? I think we're going to see a lot of Cody Walker and some of the freshmen, Williams. But Alex Collins, this is a guy... He's a difference maker, and he has a little bit of difficulty to get on track today, but he has had some tough runs, and I think he's going to get better. He's a back that week in and week out just seems to get better and better. 256 through the air for Arkansas, 53 on the ground. It's stuck with what's been working. There's Alex Collins again across the 15-yard line. And that's going to do it. Arkansas 28, UTEP 10. Was there a timeout called before the end of the half? Yes. UTEP sneaking in a timeout, much to the chagrin of the fans here in Fayetteville. You see the look at Sean Kugler's face. He's disappointed that the officials kind of wrote him off. That's kind of odd uh, time for a timeout. Head coach Sean Kugler call. I figured if, if they were going to call one, you may call one with 48 seconds, and that right. was winding down, maybe use them there. But if I'm Dan Enos now, you got five seconds. Where's Keon Hatcher? Throw one down the field because UTEP's, the minor's secondary has been so porous over two quarters. Take a shot. You've got five seconds left. Yeah, Allen hit Hatcher for a 20-yard touchdown in the first quarter, and then in the second quarter, a 38-yard touchdown pass. There's Hatcher on the sideline. You've got so. Dominic Reed split out to the wide side. He's one of the fastest players on this Razorback team. Now he's going to the short side. Allen will look to throw. He's got a one-on-one -on, -one on the sideline again. Dominic Reed beat Beverly. The Arkansas crowd and sideline wants a flag, but they're not going to get it. And there is still two seconds on the clock. This is the speedster on the outside. He's just going to run right by Beverly. He's got a step or two, and he's trying to adjust to the football. That ball fits out there. He's going to walk into the end zone. I'm not so sure that the clock started with five seconds. I'm sure that took a lot longer than three seconds for that play. Do you think that was a good no call? Probably. Because I don't know if it was catchable. I think it was well to the inside of the receiver. I'm not so sure how the clock didn't yeah. start because that play took much longer than three seconds. Get back. Yeah, the clock never moves. So I think they're going to call that that play to end the half. They should. Brett Bielema is out in the field trying to get an explanation from Matt Leffler. You're Bielema, do you want another crack or do you just want to go into the No, I think you just want to go into the locker room. If you took your you took your chance, you took your shot. Let's correct it on the field and get it to halftime. Before the delay of game, timeout for Arkansas. I so didn't Arkansas, see a flag on the play, I did didn't you? either. Arkansas is going to take a timeout here. There is two seconds remaining on the clock. And it'll be fourth down in the last play of the half. And it's been a terrific half for this Arkansas offense. 314 yards total offense, four possessions, four touchdowns. 
Brandon Allen already tying a career high with four touchdown passes in a single game. Multiple explosive plays for this offense. And, and I think that's what you're looking for if you're an Arkansas fan, especially on the offensive side of the football. Have the passing game catch up to where you think the running game's going to be maybe in two, three, four weeks. So that Brandon Allen has confidence when he gets into the SEC that he can make those plays either at home or on the road because they had so many games that were one possession, one score games that they were on the wrong side of last season. They may dial up the same play. Dominic Reed is isolated on Beverly again. They're going to hand it off to Collins, and he finds a seat, breaks a tackle. Two men to beat, gets to the sideline, knocked out. And that's how the half ends. How about that run by Alex Collins and Deshaun Smith, the free safety, finally ran him down to protect six points, a 69-yard run to He had more half. yards on that run than he did in the entire first half. All Arkansas in the first half, they did most of their damage through the air, but Alex Collins nearly got into the end zone for the fifth time today for the Hawks, a 69-yard run at the end, 28-10 at the half. Good job, buddy. Number 18, Arkansas with five possessions in that first half and four touchdown drives of over 70 yards. They lead UTEP 28 to 10 as we get ready for the third quarter. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Alongside my partner, former Pitt quarterback John Congemi, I'm Clay Mathic. We welcome you back inside here in Fayetteville. Dan Enos, during his time as the head coach at Central Michigan, had quarterbacks that throw, threw for 3,000 yards four times in his five years. We're seeing him put his stamp on this Arkansas offense immediately here in 2015. It's fun. It's fun to watch. You know, for all the times you've watched Arkansas over the past couple of years and you've seen him pack them in and run the football, it's nice to see his senior quarterback and Brandon Allen be able to collaborate with the offensive coordinator and move the football not only down the field but sideline to sideline. There's been a number of times where those short passes and screen plays have turned into explosive plays. They're a dime to the back of the end zone, but here, Get it to your athletes in space. Jared Cornelius making multiple minors miss on defense. And then show off your strong arm. Show off Keon Hatcher's speed and explosiveness down the field. And when you have a quarterback that goes 10 of 13 for 256 and four touchdowns in the first half, I think you're on to something. UTEP's going to get the football to start the second half. It's a low line dry kick by Salem. Atre Golden scoops it up, gets it back close to the 20-yard line. As we take a look at the statistics from the first half, and all Arkansas. They did such a nice job of controlling the tempo, controlling the play, and you can see the yards per play, 13.7, almost 14 yards. So you're getting chunk yardage plays in, and even though you lose the time of possession, you've been more explosive with the football when you've had it. So Arkansas doing a nice job, and, and UTEP rallied there in the middle of that second quarter. Now they have to come out and open up the third quarter, try to establish the line of scrimmage and, and possess the football for a little while and try to get a couple explosive plays mixed in there as well. Yeah, that's what they're known for, establishing the line of scrimmage. It's 53 rushing yards in the oh, first man. half, and that's intercepted. Batted out of the air and then picked off by Andre Tolliver. One of the reasons that Rob Smith thinks that this secondary is going to end up being a real strength for Arkansas this year. What an athletic play by Andre Tolliver. He's going to come on the secondary blitz from the wide side of the field. He anticipates Mac Leftwich's throw and even Leftwich pulled it down to try to avoid him. He he tries to move and get a clear passing lane to the outside, but Tolliver tips the ball to himself, and now the Razorbacks, 13 and up inside the 10-yard line offensively. Tolliver, the sophomore out of Louisiana. He's going to play a lot of nickel this year for the Razorbacks. 
creating the first turnover of this football game, and Brandon Allen gets it back. Collins behind him. He's away from center. It will be Collins on the run. Battles his way into the end zone for a touchdown. His first of the year. He had that long 70-yard run just ahead of half. Well, it took him a full <laughs> half time to wait, but he did get into the end zone here right away to start the second half. He does a terrific job of making you miss in short spaces. There wasn't a whole lot of room in that hole, but Collins makes the first minor miss and finds the end zone. Just one turnover in this game so far. It's Andre Tolliver with a terrific interception, and Collins does the dirty work offensively. ESPNU College Football is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Offense the story in the first half for Arkansas. Here right away in the second half, the defense standing tall. A big play by Andre Tolliver. Leads to another short touchdown. Run for Arkansas to make it 35 to 10. Salem kicks off again. From the goal line, Atre Golden. Good coverage. He's brought down at the 16-yard line. Here's the interception by Tolliver. Sophomore does a terrific job coming on the blitz from the wide side. He's going to tip the football to himself. And the athleticism, he's able to bring it down and get inside the 10-yard line. And then it was all about the offensive line and Alex Collins making Michael Lewis miss in the hole and finding his way into the end zone. So a spectacular defensive play by the Razorbacks on that side. And then they make you pay with the Alex Collins touchdown. Defensive coordinator Rob Smith, who first met Brett Bielema when he was in GA at Iowa, really likes the pieces of the puzzle, the way that they're fitting together here in Fayetteville. Aaron Jones on the carry, breaks a tackle, throws a stiff arm, and gets across the 20 to the 22 before Josh Williams brings him down. That defense ranked 76th nationally in 2013. Last year they jumped into the top 10. And he really thinks, even though that there aren't household names on this Razorbacks defense now, that by the end of the year they will be. He's, he was saying, and so was head coach Brett Bielema, this, this unit might be better than last year's. And the strength is in the rotation up front and in that secondary. When the linebackers catch up, it could be a dangerous unit. Play fake, rolling out, Leftwich throws on the run, it's incomplete. Intended for Plinky, the tight end, who had a big play in the first half. And it'll bring up third down and four. And that's really saying something when you talk about the guys that they lost. They lost four players to the NFL, and he still thinks this group could be better than last year. Now, I know it's week one, right? We, we talked to the coaching staff yesterday, but they truly believe that. And I, and I think Rob Smith with his experience with the players that left and moved on to the NFL, he knows what he's replacing those guys with. So if they feel confident, this team can go a long way, or at least has the opportunity to go a long way. Jones in the backfield with Leftwich on third down and four. He'll flare it out. Jones makes the catch, and he's cut down at the 16. What a play by Tolliver. Wow, he feels 10 feet tall and bulletproof right now, the way he's playing. Anticipation and closing speed by the sophomore. Does a terrific job on the last series with the interception. Watch the recognition of the pass to the flat and then the blur of a red jersey on the tackle. That's confidence. A loss of six on that play, so now fourth down, a punting situation. Luna on for the third time to kick. DJ Dean is going to try his hand on the punt return. It's muffed in the backfield. And Arkansas trying to jump on it inside the five. And they're going to have a goal to go from inside the five at the three. Defense and special teams 
are teeing up the offense for the Razorbacks. You skip it back to your kicker and Alan Luna, and he can't get on it. He can't control the football to get it away. And now the special teams for Arkansas all over the guys in white inside the five. McKinney recovered it. Nick Dooley, the snap was low, and they had three punts blocked last year. That wasn't blocked. It was just a bad special teams play. And now here's Arkansas right on the doorstep again. And Cody Walker, 256 pounds of him, is going to get the carry. And he bulls his way in for a touchdown. Well, now it's starting to look too easy here for Arkansas as UTEP really struggling here to start the second half. The one thing we talked about, Clay, in the beginning of this game, you can't shorten the field for an explosive team on offense, and you can't have mistakes with turnovers or penalties. On back-to-back -back series, you turn the football over once through the air and once on special teams, and you give Arkansas a short field. That's why the score right now is 41-10. Make it 42 to 10. That is a load to bring down. Cody Walker, his first touchdown of the day. Arkansas with 14 points here in the early stages of the second half off two turnovers. And here's the low snap, a fumble recovered by Arkansas in the five, and then the big bull, Cody Walker, bangs his way into the end zone for his first touchdown of the year. Twice in the early in this third quarter, the Arkansas offense sets up inside the 10-yard line, and 14 points later, it's 42 to 10. Short kick, Golden from the five-yard line. He's dangerous, gets to the 30, and that's where UTEP will go to work. Let's go to the studio and Brendan. Clay, in the last two years, 20 FCS teams have upset FBS teams, and uh, add two more to that. Portland State goes into Washington State and wins, and in David Beatty's debut at Kansas, South Dakota State plays spoiler with a 41-38 win. Back to you. Those Jackrabbits, they'll get you. <laughs> I'm telling you. I would have lost that bet. I would have not been able to pull that one out. The Jacks out of the Missouri Valley beating Kansas in Lawrence. And Washington State, Mike Leach is yes. going down. 42 to 10, Arkansas, number 18 in the country, leading Utah. The Miners have it here, having turned it over on their last two possessions. Penalty flag. False start. Offense, 65. Five yard penalty. First down. Alongside former. Pitt quarterback John Congemi. I'm Clay Mathic. This is the season opener for these two teams here in Fayetteville at Reynolds Razorback Stadium. It's been a warm day. Muggy. Not as hot as it was yesterday. And actually, Brett Bielema was concerned about that leading up to the opener, the weather. As Jones takes it up along the near sideline and a good run out close to midfield. There hasn't been a whole lot of bright spots in this second half for the Miners, offensively, defensively, or on special teams, but you have to give it to Aaron Jones. He plays the game just like his head coach, Sean Kugler, wants him to. He plays it hard every snap and every opportunity. That's a couple times we've seen him break arm tackles and turn it into the opportunity for chunk yardage plays down the field. Run of 20 yards for Jones. Average 20 carries and 110 yards per game last year. He's got 13 for 57 today so far. Here comes another one. Oh, and he's met and pushed back. Santos Ramirez and Josh Williams combining on that stop. Ramirez, number nine for Arkansas. Huge, well-sculpted hitter. Doesn't have a lot of game experience, but he's a guy that Rob Smith thinks is going to throw his body around a lot this year. And he did on that first down play coming from the secondary. Good-looking athlete. Well, end around to Jones. 
Arkansas sniffed it out. Little or no gain. It's going to bring up third down and long as Hackett and Ellis make the stop. Let's revisit your keys to the game. And playing clean football has been UTEP's M.O. the last couple of years under Sean Kugler. But we've seen turnovers rear their ugly head here early in the second half. Well, two of the turnovers turn into instant touchdowns for Arkansas. You turn in 14 points and you come out in the second half and all of a sudden you're, you're way behind. You felt like you have a chance getting the football and living up to expectations. Six tackles for loss. Not a whole lot of running room on the ground. This Arkansas defense may be as advertised. Third and eight off balance. Leftwich throws it away. Good pressure by Brooks Ellis who had a very good first half. This guy's all over the field. Ellis comes right through the A-gap and he's going to run down Mac Leftwich. And he forces him to throw the football away on third down. That's great speed from that Will linebacker position. He's from right here in Fayetteville. Went to Fayetteville High School, a very humble pre-med student. And because of the way this defense is designed, Rob Smith thinks that he's going to get 100 tackles this year, just like Spate did last year. Another mistake in the punt game. And great field position again for Arkansas. There's a penalty flag down. Penalty flag is at about the 46-yard line of Arkansas. Plinky was able to recover, and it's going to be a good field position here for Arkansas at the 34. After Utah. the play was over, unsport, excuse correction, personal foul, face mask on Arkansas. That's a 15-yard penalty. Arkansas keeps the ball, first and 10. So they're still going to have it in UTEP territory even after the face mask penalty, but this punt unit. And that looked like a design I think you're fake, right. and, the, and the snap just went over the up-back's head. Yeah, it, was, it appeared to be a direct snap to Hayden Plinky, the tight end, who was the up-back in that punt formation. I guess you kept thinking at this point we have nothing you to have lose. To, yes, absolutely. But special teams now on back-to-back -back opportunities have given the football back on their side of the 50. Once inside the five. Well, we expected to see Raleigh Williams at some point in this game. He is the true freshman out of Dallas as the lone setback behind Brandon Allen. Allen fakes the handoff, rolls out to the near side, dumps it off to Sprinkle. Big Jeremy Sprinkle bouncing off tacklers inside the 10, down at the 7-yard line. That's his second big play today. A gain of 42 yards for the junior from Arkansas. Well, it's not only down the field. They're spreading it sideline to sideline. We've seen screens go for big plays. This time it's play action. You overload to the wide side. You finally sneak out the 6'6 junior tight end and sprinkle. And he breaks a couple tackles now. The Razorbacks again inside the 10-yard line. Seventh play of 20 yards or more for Arkansas today. They have been explosive on offense. First and goal. Allen passes to the end zone and was looking for Sprinkle. It lands incomplete. Two receptions, 61 yards for the big tight end. The only problem is on that last play, the communication broke down a little bit. I think he was so shocked he was wide open in the end zone, he just stopped. And then the quarterback, Brandon Allen, threw it out of the end zone. So both guys not on the same page. Remember, that happened in the first half. Arkansas came right back with a, a nice touchdown pass. So far, Arkansas perfect in the red zone. Second and goal. Here's Williams. Boy, he almost stepped out of a tackle to get into the end zone. Michael Lewis, the weak safety, made the tackle. And Raleigh Williams rushed for over 2,800 yards at Bishop Lynch High School in Dallas. 
the coaches are ecstatic about this kid's upset. They really are, and all he did was follow around injured Jonathan Williams. He wasn't injured at the time all summer. Tried to soak up as much information on how to act as a Razorback football player, and he looks like he's gonna, he's poised to get into the end zone for the first time. Josh Allen lined up as the fullback, and he ran in to Brandon Allen. And Allen goes down at the line of scrimmage. It was a busted play. As number 50, Josh Allen, the true freshman, who's listed on the depth chart as a backup guard, came in to play fullback, and it was bad from the start. Yeah, just ran right into him. I think the would-be fullback went the wrong way. He couldn't get out of the quarterback's sight line, and therefore Allen couldn't get the football back to Williams. So one Allen running into the other brings on the special teams unit. That's the first Arkansas drive today that stalls out, so Cole Headland will come on for a 19-yard field goal attempt. Headland, the highest-rated kicker out of high school last year. And it's 45 to 10, Arkansas. You can stream every game live at home or on the go. Just download the Watch ESPN app or visit watchespn.com. What a perfect time to do it, too. The opening weekend of the college football season across ESPN. U.S. Open tennis coverage on ESPN, too, that you can watch all that action, your mobile device. You've got it all covered, Clay. Yep. A lot of pig suey going on yeah, right now here in Fayetteville. A lot of scoring, a lot of pig suey is right. 45 to 10 now. In under seven minutes here in the second half, Arkansas has tacked on 17 more points since after. Atre Golden has been well covered so far. There's a penalty marker down. A helmet comes off. And Golden steps across the 35 and is cut down at the 37. In the return, holding number 36 on the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty. It's first down. UTEP has really hurt itself here in the early stages of the second half, John. They have. They've, they've done a, a poor job of protecting the football, whether it's coming out with the first series on a remarkable interception by Tolliver on the blitz, but it sets up and tees up this Arkansas offense inside the 10 yard line. This time, a poor snap on special teams. Gives the Arkansas offense first and goal inside the five-yard line. And that's where Cody Walker bulls his way into the end zone. A field goal later, and it's 17 unanswered in this third quarter for the Razorbacks. A couple of penalties, a couple of turnovers for UTEP. And it's now 45 to 10. Mac Leftwich, the son of UTEP O-line coach Spencer Leftwich, tosses it back to Aaron Jones. Looking for blockers on the left side. And another strong run for Aaron Jones. His helmet pops off. As Andre Tolliver is there to escort him out. Last year, they were one of the best in major college football in turnovers. Just 12 on the year. But they've had two here in the second half. You this protect game. the football, and you can do some things in your conference. And... Sean Kugler not happy about that last tackle by Andre Tolliver where the helmet came off of Aaron Jones. He replaced Mike Price before the 2013 season after 12 years as an NFL line coach. He's an intense man. Jeremiah LaFossa driven back by that defensive front of the Hawks. And again, number 51, Brooks Ellis in there as well. Play. That's a textbook tackle by a guy moving from middle linebacker to the outside spot. He's going to be right here. Watch him meet the running back in the hole and square his shoulders up 
and there's no nowhere to go. I mean, that's just, you can't coach it any better. If Rob Smith, the defensive coordinator, wanted to have a highlight reel, that might be the first one you show. Kavika Johnson, the Wildcat quarterback. And Arkansas has seen that enough now where they're not taken by surprise by it. I think early in the game, UTEP brought that new wrinkle in, and it kind of put Arkansas not on its heels, but gave them a little bit of a hesitation, maybe a, a split second, and they had a little bit more room to run. Now Rob Smith coordinating this defense from the sideline with the lead and the comfort of seeing it a couple of times. I think all 11 guys are rallying to the football against that Wildcat. We've had eight tackles for loss here today. Just 146 yards of offense for the Miners. Third and ten. Dumped off short. Jones, first down and more. Across midfield and inside the 40-yard line. He has been the bright spot for the Miners all day, and Tolliver tracks him down to keep him out of the end zone. That's at least the third time we've seen Aaron Jones on third down be able to catch a pass and create a play, not only to get the first down, but to move the football down across the 50-yard line. He's done a nice job on third down as he comes out of the game of being able to extend drives for the Miners. Very balanced, 70 on the ground, 83 through the year. That's a gain of 33. Right, Kavika Johnson dropped behind the line of scrimmage again. And there is Andre Tolliver having himself a half. Tolliver's really good. He excels at tackling in the open field. He's done a nice job of taking down multiple ball carriers with no help on the outside. Collins, Tolliver, and DJ Dean, the three corners we've seen for the most part today. Cornelius Floyd was listed on the preseason depth chart, but he popped a hammy this week, so Ryan Pulley was inserted into that spot. Cornerback play has been terrific today for the Hogs. Second down and 11. Out to the flat, there's Jeremiah LaFossa doing a little tap dance along the sideline trying to stay in bounds. He's driven out at the 33 by Dwayne Eugene, the backup Sam linebacker. I know coming into this game, Patrick Higgins, the offensive coordinator for UTEP, the goal was to try to be at least around 50% on third down. They've, for most of the game, they've been hovering around 50%. I believe they're 5 of 10 going into this opportunity. Yep. Uh, Looked like some things were out of sorts there for UTEP as they had late personnel changes trying to scramble onto the field, so they call a quick timeout with under five minutes to go here in the quarter. The playoff push begins with Saturday night football. Number 20, Wisconsin. Number 3, Alabama. Should be good tonight at 8 on ABC and streaming live at Watch ESPN. Who is the quarterback eventually going to be for Alabama, or are they going to have a two-man system this year? It sure sounds like it. I mean, when you take a look at the depth chart, Nick Saban, their head coach, listed all five guys, and they crammed them into two spots, which was... <laughs> Great out-of-the-box thinking, but I think Jay Coker and Cooper Bateman, I, I think Coker's going to probably get the start and, and Bateman in the wings. Should be good tonight on an ABC. Third down and five for UTEP. Johnson throws it out to Golden. And he gets the first down on that receiver screen. Golden has made his biggest contributions for UTEP in the last few years in the return game. He's the number one receiver now. They just haven't had a lot of freedom today offensively. Arkansas has made it tough on this unit. There hasn't been a lot of space, and that's because of the pursuit and the angles and the attack. That, that nature of, of mentality, I think, on this Arkansas defense. Johnson. Back-to-back -back reps here out of the Wildcat. And 
to the 20 yard line. And that goes back, Clay, to the mantra of Rob Smith, their offensive coordinator. They know to be successful this year, they need to stop the run, especially in the SEC. They have to limit the big explosive plays, and they have to create turnovers. Well, they've, they've held the script pretty much this afternoon. Johnson looking to throw, but the pocket collapses around him, and he's spun down by Demarcus Hodge. Talked about him being in the best shape of his career. Quick like a cat, he gets in for the first sack of the day for the Arkansas defense. Jamichael Winston, the captain, is down on the play. Hodge is going to be right here, and he's going to be relentless on this play. He gets a good first step. He's able to free up that inside arm and then pursue the quarterback. He had nice help on the outside as well, but anytime you get a 6'1", 340-pound nose tackle coming at you, it's tough when he's got you in his sights. Now Winston is up. And moving smoothly to the sideline, that's good news for Arkansas. And I think Winston was maybe the help on the outside that was forcing the quarterback and, and squeezing him with Hodge coming from the inside. Utep hasn't scored since the second quarter. That lands incomplete for Mac Leftwich. Was rolling to the right, then threw back left, and there was somebody right in his grill. Mitchell Laven, the senior defensive tackle, and it's fourth down. Trying to throw an outside screen. He's going to look right, does Leftwich, but never sees the defensive tackle coming from the inside. Laven does a great job of closing the distance between himself and the quarterback. Forty-four yard attempt for Maddox, who hit from 38 earlier. And this one is good as well. And it's 45-13 with 3.01 to go here in the third quarter. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship money. I mean, they can't even put an accurate figure on it because it's just it's so much too money. Too much. So UTEP drives into Arkansas territory, kicks three home, and it's 45-13. John Kugler was mentored by Andy Reid. Gives you an idea about his style. Andy Reid, a, a disciplinarian, a, a guy that puts a value on line play, and that's John Kugler. Well, 12 years as a position coach in the National Football League, and he's a guy that had to turn this program around, turn the culture around when he first arrived. He wanted to get some discipline back in this program, and now in his third season, I think they're going to make some noise in Conference USA. They have a running back. They look like they have a, a quarterback that can get it done. And if they can improve on the back end, I think that's probably, and they know this, that's the weakness of this team right now is in the back end. If you can get healthy, you might be able to compete. They picked third in the Conference USA Western Division. Well, the Buckeyes begin their title defense, looking to avenge last year's only loss in a rematch with the Hokies. College football primetime, Ohio State, Virginia Tech. That's Monday night at 8 o'clock on ESPN. And the Buckeyes are your favorite to win it all again this year. Why do they repeat in your estimation? I just think their schedule. I, I look at their schedule and I look at the talent on that team, and I don't see anybody coming out and scaring them. They know who the big three are on the schedule. And I think people may be overestimating the opener against Virginia Tech and the talent they have defensively. They've got two quarterbacks, too, going they into do. that first game. Good problem to have, considering how well both of them played last year. Raleigh Williams, true freshman, getting some touches here in the second half. And this is valuable experience.
for the rookie for Arkansas. It is. Anytime you can get real playing time and go out and do all the things that you do in practice and bring him on to the field in front of a, a, a juiced crowd at your home stadium, never turn those opportunities away. They're going to need guys like this if they're going to win the tight games here in 2015. The tight, close ball games. Those victories eluded them last year. Williams again, first down, and that was an impressive run for the 5'10", 215-pound freshman. Well, you get to see the explosiveness on the outside play. A little bit of a confusion in the backfield. Wasn't real seamless, but he's able to get the football. I think that Williams wanted to get the ball before Brandon Allen was able to hand it to him. Seemed like he got off track a little bit, but once he got his hands on the football, he had enough speed to dart to the outside and move the chains. Three carries, 18 total yards for Williams so far. He'll get it again on first down. Out near the 40-yard line. Adrian Hinson in on the tackle for Utah. Talked about Ohio State being the number one team in the country. TCU, the number two team in the nation, already has a win under its belt. They went into Minneapolis and beat a good Golden Gophers team on Thursday night. Alabama, Wisconsin, 8 Eastern tonight on ABC. And the preseason AP Top 10 presented by Goodyear. You agree with that Top 10? I do. I think you could probably make an argument for a couple of teams inching their way in there. But right now, you get a good feel after about week four, I think, because you get into conference play, most of the teams. And, you know, Baylor went out through six touchdowns and was all over SMU. But let's let's see them when they match up against somebody that maybe can keep up with them offensively. See how good that defense is. Florida State just inside that top ten. They've got a new quarterback, too, the transfer from Notre Dame. Absolutely. Golson's going to be at the helm. Four new offensive linemen. How quickly do they adapt on offense? The running play here for Arkansas. There's Williams, and he's got the first down. USC, very good football team. They're ranked in the top ten. A lot of people say that that Pac-12 South might be even tougher than the SEC West is this year. Not so fast, my friend. I don't know. It, it might be. I, I really like the SEC top to bottom, and you're right. You add in Arizona State, you know, you look at UCLA, what are they going to do this year? USC was my pick to win the Pac-12, so you're, you're kind of get multiple teams in there. Stanford, you know, goes down today. So there, there's a, it'll, be, it'll be back and forth in a lot of these conferences throughout the year. That's the end of the third quarter here in Fayetteville. It's been a good start to the 2015 campaign for a team many people feel will contend in the SEC West this year, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Are they going to be able to manage those expectations? They did it fine through three quarters. Let's see what the four holds for the Razorbacks. Arkansas poised to have a 300-yard passer, a 100-yard rusher, and a 100-yard receiver today. Brandon Allen, starting quarterback, still in this game as the fourth quarter commences. And Raleigh Williams, the tailback, who's third on the depth chart, continues to get work, and he carries it three yards into UTEP territory. All right, John, how long does Brett Bielema stay with his key players? I would think one more series, and, and that goes for, first off, Brandon Allen. I mean, 302 off of 12 completions, four touchdowns, ties the career high 
with scores. So I think he's going to maybe finish this series out and, and, and give way to his backup. And his backup <laughs> is his younger brother, Austin Allen. He's been the guy tapping him on the shoulder, saying, hey, <laughs> get what out about of me? <laughs> Austin Allen played in five games last year as a redshirt freshman, likely to get some time here today. There's Raleigh Williams again. He is the other Williams in the Arkansas backfield. Of course, Jonathan Williams out for the year with a foot injury, the 1,200-yard rusher from last season. So a true freshman like Raleigh Williams is going to get some opportunity, not just today, but as the season wears on. I think so, because he's he's a different type of back. We saw that speed to the outside. Well, we know Alex Collins. He's a workhorse. He can do everything because he's so explosive, so powerful. And, and Cody Walker's the 260-pound back, but you've got a guy in, in Williams that can get to the edge, and, and we hope we see one of those explosive runs from him. Keon Hatcher goes in motion. He's a yard away from 100 receiving. They target him, and he's got it. And he's got another Arkansas first down. Adrian Henson pulled him down by his hair. No penalty flag, but I guess that's the price you pay for looking that good. Well, you've got you've got the hair exposed, and it's almost part of the uniform at that point. Any means possible to try to get him down, and that's exactly what Henson did. But, you know, that's a perfect example of a play right there where you can get injured, and you want to get these guys maybe off to the side and, and kind of get other people exposure here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, so Hatcher... Six catches now, 106 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Raleigh Williams again tripped up. Picks up a yard to the 40-yard line. Trey Brown, backup Will Linebacker on the stop. That's Aaron's little brother. I don't know if he's littler, but he, he looks bulked up at that linebacker spot. His first year at the position, showing you his anticipation and his athleticism making that tackle close to the line of scrimmage. 12.20 to go here in Fayetteville. Arkansas impressive here on opening day. They've got a brutal schedule to look forward to as the season unwinds. Penalty flag on the inside as Raleigh Williams carries out close to another first down. Holding, offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, replay, second half. This is the first of 10 games this season for Brett Bielema's squad against opponents who played in a bowl game a year ago. They played three straight SEC games away from home, starting with Texas A&M on September 26th. That game will be in Arlington, Texas. Plus, back-to-back -back road games at Tennessee and Bama in October, and at Ole Miss and LSU in November. I mean, what a meat <laughs> grinder for the it Hawks. It is. It is. And those last two teams in LSU and Ole Miss, they had huge success against last year. Williams again. Bring up third down. Just a look at the entire schedule. Yeah, those shutouts of LSU and Ole Miss last year really put... Arkansas on the map, and then of course that borderline erotic bowl win over Texas. Well, that was, as Pilama put it, that was unbelievable because you, you hold a team in Texas to 59 total yards, and you also you know you limit them on the on the ground. I think they had two first downs, maybe. I, yeah. It, it was it was an unbelievable performance by Arkansas. At first conference game against Texas A&M later this month, I think that's where we're really going to see what. Arkansas has made a Arkansas. UTEP hasn't been much of a challenge here today. Arkansas with the timeout with under 11 to go. Brandon Fitzgerald back in studio with an update. Penn State and Temple, a tight one. Christian Hackenberg intercepted here by Reef Finch. Takes it down to the two-yard line. Temple would punch it in with P.J. Walker. And the Owls up 17-10. Upset alert in Philly. Clay will keep you posted. Thank you.
you know, interceptions have kind of plagued Hackenberg during his time at Penn State. You know, that's the one thing in, in openers. We, we saw a tight game. We see, we've seen tight games all throughout the day with teams that you go, there's no way. And Penn State with Hackenberg, you're right. Last year, the interception bug really ca caught up to him in certain games. So far, the clock before halftime is the only thing that has stopped this <laughs> Arkansas right. offense. Here they are on third and 16. Allen still in there, drops it off short to Williams. And Arkansas will have to punt. Jimmy Musgrave, the middle linebacker, number 10, former walk-on at Oregon. Now in his second season at UTEP, made the stop. And we finally get to talk about Toby Baker, the Arkansas punter. Has he seen the field today? This is it. This is All the right. first time. First-year punter, former high school quarterback. Something to keep in mind as the season wears on. Because yes. Brett Bielema is known for tricks. Nick Needham is back deep for UTEP. Standing at the 10-yard line. Clean snap, short punt. He does drop it inside the 20. Ball is loose as Needham lost it. Arkansas recovers. Josh Williams gets it back for the Razorbacks. Another special teams blunder for the Miners. And that's three for UTEP on the day. Two cost them field position and 14 points and this one again where Arkansas will tee the football up on the 15 yard line middle linebacker turned to special teams man on the spot Josh Williams recovers the fumble but that, those are just three mistakes you cannot make on the road against a team that clearly outmans you physically and now we're gonna get our first look and Arkansas's backup quarterback, Austin Allen, Brandon's younger brother. Austin led Fayetteville High School to back-to-back -back state titles, was the 2012 State Player of the Year. And Raleigh Williams takes it to the 11-yard line. Austin Allen is going to have a good college career as well. And they said the differences between, or the coaching staff said the differences between Austin and Brandon on Brandon's more subdued, he's more calm demeanor. He said, Austin, he's the other guy. He's the free spirit. He's the guy that's going to tell you how he feels, and he lives a little bit on the edge. So that's a good good contrast when you come into the huddle, especially in this type of game where you got to get the attention of your guys to stay poised and stay focused. How about Fayetteville High School and the talent they the have produced? Brooks Ellis went to that school, as did... Drake Greenlaw, another linebacker for the Hawks. Williams continues to get second half work. They keep it on the ground, working that clock as we're under nine minutes now. And not only for the backup quarterback and, and Raleigh Williams, the offensive line, you get guys in at tight end. You get a lot of good exposure on film, a lot of good coaching points. Now that you go back for Dan Enos, the new offensive coordinator, to not only coach the starters, the guys you're depending on, but a guy that's one play away from playing an integral role in winning or losing. Raleigh Williams finds a hole on the left side. Boy, he is a hard worker. Wills his way to a first down and more. Deshaun Smith finally wrestled him to the ground. First down goal to go for the Hawks. This is a guy who's only a freshman, 5'10", 215. He looks put together. Wait until one full season here in, on the Arkansas campus and get him in the weight room, get him the proper rest he needs in the offseason, the proper workout regimen. This guy, he's going he's gonna to play a big role down the line for this offense. He's got as many carries as Alex Collins had today, a dozen. Now a Baker's dozen, but this play might be wiped out. Penalty mark. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, first down. That's Sebastian Tritola. Terrific last year as a junior college transfer, even through a touchdown pass on a fake field goal in the non-conference slate last year. Can't say enough again about this Arkansas offensive line and the talent they've got up there. They're large and they're in charge, that's for sure. 
First down and goal from the eight yard line. Austin Allen on his first series of work. And Williams is going to be stacked up. Via Real, the former Oklahoma State Cowboy, making the tackle. It just might be time to let Austin Allen move the pocket a little bit down here in the red zone. Even though the score is at 45 to 13, you can't let a defense kind of tee off in between the tackles when you know run, 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 and you're just trying to get out of the last seven minutes of this football game. There's Brandon Allen. What a day for him. 308 through the air, four touchdown passes matching a career high. Now little brother wants to throw, standing tall in the pocket. And misses his receiver. That was intended for Dominic Reed. Arkansas is predicted, John, to finish fourth in the SEC West by the quote-unquote experts being the media. So I, I use that term loosely. Do, do you think that's an accurate assessment? Well, if you go off of last year, I, we were talking about this before the game, and we said, you know, somebody is going to have a very good football team, and they're going to finish last <laughs> in the SEC West. That was Arkansas last year. Yes. So fourth is a, is a step up, but I think their goals and their aspirations are a little bit higher. Timeout. Second charge timeout. Arkansas. Happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. Here's our Taco Bell game track. All Arkansas here late in the fourth quarter, 45-13. It's been a great day for the offense, especially Brandon Allen, the starting quarterback, matching a career high with four touchdown passes. Alex Collins had that long run just ahead of halftime, accounting for 70 yards of his 127 today. But a very good first game of the year for the Arkansas Razor. Nice way to ease into your season. You're able to throw the football, only 18 attempts, but you get the most production out of those 18 attempts and 14 completions and match a career high with touchdowns with four. Five-step drop. Austin Allen to the end zone. Looking for a touchdown. It goes through Dominique Reed's hands. He had to get on a step stool for that one. And he's 6'3", 180. He's the kind of guy that's going to make some of those catches this year. He is a very long receiver. If that's, there's a guy on this team to throw that football to, it's him because he does have a big, long frame and he'll go up and get the football. Not only is he fast in the open field, but down in the red zone could be a, a nice target for Brandon Allen. This is a 27-yard attempt for Cole Headland. He hit from 19 earlier today. Out of the hold of Matt Emmerich. That's good. Emmerich, a guy who also snaps and punts. Bielema calls him his master specialist. So special teams also clicking on all cylinders on opening day. The Hogs have been terrific today, 48-13. Six and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. We take a look at today's AT&T strong performance. Brandon Allen. He was sensational. 14 of 18 for 308, and he matched a career high with four touchdowns. Here's the second one to Keon Hatcher. Goes up and attacks the football in the corner of the end zone. Cornelius on the outside. You make a couple minors miss. You find the house for six. But this was the one that was impressive. Just a, a dime on the outside to Keon Hatcher. And Brandon Allen in the season over was feeling it today. Golden on the return, upended at the 26 yard line. And we check in again with Brendan. Clay, Nebraska has won 29 straight times to start the season, but the BYU Cougars are giving the Huskers all they can handle. Down three in the third quarter, but Tommy Armstrong Jr. to Trey Foster for the nine-yard touchdown. It is 28-24, Nebraska with the lead. And Lincoln, Clay, back to you. BYU has a great quarterback in Taysom Hill. I mean, that's, uh, and they're fighting multiple suspensions Yes, today. they are. 
Opening day in Lincoln, Nebraska, always yes. entertaining. Ryan Metz is going to take snaps now at quarterback for UTEP as this Arkansas defense gets ready for this series. Metz on the run. There's a strike to the 30-yard line. Donovan Walker makes the catch. There's Ryan Metz, product of Andrus High School in El Paso, a redshirt freshman. Number two on the depth chart behind Leftwich for this game, Garrett Simpson, the 6'7 junior quarterback, who is considered Leftwich's backup as a high ankle sprain, not 100% today, and I think they're just being cautious with him. And I, I think it helps when you have that situation and you bring Kavika Johnson in for the Wildcat. Just gives you another alternative to go to at quarterback. Zone read. Johnson will hand it off to LaFossa. And he stood up. Loss of one on the plate will be third down. This Arkansas defense today, 11 tackles for loss now and one sack. They, they were sturdy at the point of attack. They did a nice job of Really winning that battle at the line of scrimmage. Dre Greenlaw. Another product of Fayetteville High School. He is the backup to Brooks Ellis at that weak side linebacker spot. And when his career is said and done, they think he's going to have a couple 100 tackle years on his resume. Thrown out to the flat, that's Darren LaFossa. Got close to the first down and then... He is surrounded. It's going to be close. Santos Ramirez again throwing his body around in on the stop. That was a good effort by both offense and defense on that last play. Mufasa knew where the chains were, and I think he's going to come up about a football short or about a, a yard short of this first down. Arkansas will host Toledo in Little Rock next week. Is the first down. Sunday from 8 a.m. till noon, ESPN, you bringing you college football Sunday from Heisman hopefuls to championship contenders. We've got you covered Sunday, the only show that ranks them all exclusively on the U. And Arkansas, when they play in Little Rock. Yes. That is a great atmosphere, and it's such a treat for the fans who live down there to get that it experience is. come right to their back. This was my first experience here, and it was unbelievable, the excitement for Arkansas football. In the anticipation of, of seeing exactly what type of team, you know, what strides they're going to make from last year to this year. And after the game at Little Rock against the Rockets, they'll host Texas Tech back here in two weeks. So a good start schedule-wise for the Razorbacks in the fact that they've got home games. With that said, we've touched on the schedule and how challenging it will be for Brett Bielema's team. It's going to be difficult. As you said, it starts out the way that Coach Bielema would like it. You get your feet wet, you get a good experience at home, and then you take it on the road. And you go to Arlington, you go to Tennessee, you go to Alabama. I think you're going to know much more about your football team after October 10th. UTEP. Another timeout called by UTEP. Three and a half to go. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Partner, you and I are going to find ourselves in front of a TV tonight yes. for Saturday Night Football. A great way to start the year for these two programs, regardless of the outcome, what a, what a great atmosphere that's going to be. Wisconsin, number 20 in the country, number three, Alabama. That's tonight at 8 on ABC. It's going to be a good one, I think. I, I, I'm just, Wisconsin, they match up pretty good against Alabama because it's the same team. Now, I don't know if Alabama is that much better, you know, at the same positions in interior line at linebacker. Maybe they are. And Wisconsin maybe at a little bit of a, a disadvantage. You lose Melvin Gordon, and you replace him with Corey Clement. Another sack. Rossler on the hit. Pardon me, that was a run. I looked away for a second. That was a rushing play for Kavika Johnson. And it'll be third down, third and 15. 
That so wildcat play worked early in yeah, the game. It seems like defense coordinator Rob Smith has caught on to that fairly nicely. They have held UTEP to 195 yards total offense. Ryan Metz in there at quarterback again for UTEP. Play fake, wants to throw, and he completes a pass to Warren Reddick's redshirt freshman receiver, gets it to the 40-yard line. And well short of the first down with 2.40 to go, it's fourth down. Brett Bielema made an announcement to the roster in a meeting room earlier this week that they would be allowed to wear white cleats. He's been a black cleat guy ever since getting to Fayetteville, and he said, okay, I'll, I'll give in. You should have seen these players go nuts. It was they went crazy. He is a player's coach, and he's getting results to boot. Fifth punt, fair catch, Luke Rossi. Let's go to the studio and Brennan. Play if Arkansas was the trendy pick in the West, Tennessee the trendy pick in the East, and Bowling Green hanging around with the Volunteers. They made this an eight-point ball game, but on the next play from scrimmage, Josh Dobbs to Ethan Wolf. It's 42-27 at Rocky Top. Back to Fayetteville. Yeah, this is a big year for Butch Jones. It so is. I think he needs to see some progress. It, I'm not necessarily saying double-digit wins, but be really competitive. Win some games that maybe you're not predicted to win. This would be a huge setback if they get beat. They dominated Iowa in their bowl game in Jacksonville last year. They did a good job of getting a springboard towards the season. I think Tennessee's kind of in the situation where Arkansas was last year. Yeah. You know, they have to catch fire on one side of the football where Arkansas was more defensive and running. I think for Tennessee, it's, it's Dobbs in the quarterback taking the next step. Under two minutes to go, and Arkansas is going to try and run the rest of this clock out. Brett Bielema was a four-win improvement over his first season last year. Ended that school-worst 17-game SEC losing streak. Got the bowl win over Texas. You know, after three Big Ten titles at Wisconsin, a lot of people questioned his move here. You hear a lot less of that talk now. That comes with success. And that comes with being your own guy. He was really a, a trailblazer when he left Wisconsin because you're right, it did raise a lot of eyebrows, but now you see the product after three short years on the field and the exposure that where he's put himself in a conference that you're going to get in the spotlight whether you like it or not. And I think maybe he didn't feel that 100% where he was at. He seems to have pushed the right button in hiring Dan Enos, too. I know this is just one game, but the little nuances we're seeing compared to last year in this offense are fun to watch. I think on both sides, he's hit a home run. I think he really has. Dan Enos is the right temperament to coach a quarterback because he played the position, and he's got a handle on what he wants to do. And defensively, Rob Smith has done the same thing to get those guys on that side of the ball to get their attention. Nearly 500 yards of offense today in the season opener. The defense had 11 tackles for loss. Good special teams. Four touchdown passes by the starting quarterback who seems poised to have his best year of his career. Just a great start for Brett Bielema and the Arkansas Razorbacks in a win today over UTEP, 48-13. to Explosive plays on offense. You mentioned the tackles for loss on defense. How about special teams setting up the offense to start that third quarter, and that really turned the football game. 14 for 18, 308, and four touchdown passes was Allen today. they will go to Little Rock to host Toledo next week. 48-13 the final coming up at the top of the hour. Louisiana Lafayette and Kentucky. Now let's get back to the studio. Brent